you're watching the award-winning GHS TV, a nationally recognized student television station. To GHS Insider, the show that's all about the G. I'm Tia Lyons, and today you'll get an inside look at everything happening around Germantown High School. We've got a jam-packed show, so let's find out what's coming up. Bingo! A GHS organization is using the classic game to promote school spirit. We're trying to uh, keep school, get more school spirit uh, and have people show up to all of the events and support our school. Plus, our basketball team can handle the heat on the court, but can two of the players survive the hot seat? Hugh and Anthony, you're in the hot seat. Are you ready? Your time begins in three, two, one. And there are big things planned for next month's Black History program. I'll talk with organizers live in studio a little later in the show. But first, government and politics are topics that lose a lot of students' interest. But when a GHS teacher decided to discuss a topic that actually affected her students, she found she had a room full of participants. You are about to walk into the phase of your life where you are going to be the ones who have the opportunity to participate and make a change. Honors government teacher Kim Thorpe here at Germantown took the controversial topic of the three G's and turned it into a learning experience for her students. The ultimate goal was for the kids to learn the legislative process that takes place when you've got a big decision um, that has to be discussed and made that's going to impact the community as a whole. I was honestly kind of confused on how the project would work, especially because I I was on a side that I necessarily didn't agree with. When they take the children that coming from Germantown to Houston. It's just a huge mess. And so there's a lot of inefficiencies and divisions and fences. And I'm always focusing on where there are fences. Memphis That's professor Dr. Daniel Keel gave a history of the separate school systems and explained how the 3G schools fit into the equation. He said they, that Germantown had no plans on selling the school. And the answer is no. They learned about the demographics and the population of our community. They learned about how our municipalities and our cities were divided up. Um, they learned about how those areas were represented um, when it came to government um, and what that looked like. Next, she randomly separated her students into Democrats and Republicans and invited State Representative Mark White, a Republican, and State Senator Ramesh Akberi, a Democrat, to talk about the two sides of the 3G issue and give an inside look at how a state Congress works. Works. So history changes, and uh, who changes history? You do. When I met Senator Akbar and Senator White, I learned how internally how the Senate actually works. If you're a Republican, you go with this side, or if you're a Democrat, you go with this side. It's actually a lot more blended. It's more like a spectrum. Um, I wanted them to be able to see perspectives of both sides so that they knew, you know, what they were truly arguing about and understanding the gravity of the decision that had to be made. Learning how government works with all the people that are kind of related to government in a higher power than us kind of showed us how they think. So I think that allowed us to understand it better. Mrs. Thorpe's students say the 3G project connected with them because this was an issue close to them. As the project started to continue, I got more comfortable with my role and it allowed me to open up my, become more open-minded about how government works. They say they were able to understand the legislative process and how everything is not so black and white. What surprised me most is that all the people that we met, they were understanding with our process of learning all the information and they kind of made it really easy to understand from their point of view. And while the students weren't able to petition for the school to stay, they say this project helped them all understand that what was decided for the three G's was the best possible outcome. We, we learned some things, we wrote some things down, we took some notes, and we decided as a student body that it is now time for us to stand up. A special thanks to my editor and videographer, Michael Johnson, for shooting and editing the report. Seniors, you're going to want to listen to this next story, especially if you're going to an HBCU next year. The Memphis City Council has created a $1 million scholarship fund for Mid-South students. 
Students who will attend an HBCU next year are eligible to get scholarships totaling up to $15,000. This is only available to high school graduates from Memphis and Shelby County. Applications are already being accepted. To apply, go to cfgm.org slash scholarships. The deadline is March 31st. With dozens of clubs at GHS, there is something for everyone. GHS insider reporter Maria Strickland talked with members of, of a club trying to get more students out to school events. So we've all heard of the bingo cards that are going around, but do we know who's behind all of this? Joining me for Club Chat is Jillian Spiegel, and we're going to learn a little bit more about the organization. Hi, Jillian. Hi. So what is Rho Kappa? Yeah, so Rho Kappa is the Historical Honor Society here at Germantown. And who can join? Yeah, so anyone that has two completed social studies credits and maintains a 2.5 GPA can apply at the beginning of the school year. Okay, and let's talk about the bingo card. Mm -hmm. What is it? Yeah, so the bingo card just lists all of the events that you can go to in order to get extra credit. And how did you guys come up with this idea? Yeah, so a lot of Rho Kappa members like myself are in events um, that don't get a lot of support, but when we see people, we get so excited. So we're trying to uh, keep school get more school spirit, uh, and have people show up to all of the events and support our school. Awesome. And what are some perks for completing this card? Yeah, so each teacher is a little bit different, but some teachers are having five extra credit points if you complete a bingo. Um, some is a homework pass, so talk to your teachers and see. And why do you th guys think it's hard to get people out to sporting events? Yeah, so sometimes the scheduling is hard, and obviously if you... If there's none of your friends are going, you might not want to go. So this is an initiative to get people out. Okay. And are there any other ways you guys advocate to make the school better? Yeah, so we're trying to get involved with teachers as well, doing things around the school that can help them. So we'll be volunteering for track tryouts, uh, doing some school cleanups, and just trying to create a better environment here at Germantown. Awesome. So we now know about the bingo cards, but are there any other upcoming activities that you guys are going to have? Yeah, so similarly, we're just trying to get out in the community here at Germantown, keep, get some school spirit back up. Yeah. Thank you for talking with me about the bingo cards, and I hope it's a success. Thank you. Reporting for GHS Insider, I'm Maria Strickland. In today's Campus Corner, the annual Black History Program is back, and this time in person. It's been virtual for the last two years due to COVID restrictions. Joining me to talk more about it is GHS teacher, Ms. Fo Ms. Shannon Foster, and student, Maya Lewis. Thanks for joining me on Insider today. Good morning. Good morning. So, starting with you, Ms. Foster, um, in the past, there have been African dances, songs, poems. What can we expect to see this year? Um, this year, you can definitely look to see the traditional elements of the show. We're definitely going to have our poetry, uh, our spoken word, and we're looking for students to definitely add that non-traditional element. Uh, what can you bring to the Black History Program? Where do you fit in the current history and the past history? And what would you like to showcase? So all of the music, band, HBC youth performances, mm -hmm. we've definitely got some things planned uh, along with those traditional elements. And Maya, how can people get involved? Do they audition or sign up? Or? Things such as dance and a fashion show, uh, QR codes will be posted around for, so people can be able to sign up. And if people wanted to participate behind the scenes, they are welcome to come to V210 in uh, order to talk to Mr. Collins about how they can get involved. So how many acts are you shooting for? We're shooting for several acts, including the ones that we had in the past, so fashion, dance, music, even spoken words. Um, Ms. Foster, when did the planning process for all of this begin? Uh, planning got underway this past week. Uh, we've met with our uh, teachers uh, who are going to help support our students as they put this show together because this is definitely a student-led production. Uh, and so we, we got underway last week and uh, we've got some more meetings coming up, rehearsals going to get started um, as we just put this production on and showcase the best that Germantown has to offer. Okay, so when can we expect to see this program? This program will take place on February 24th. Uh, there will be two shows in VGM, so we want to make sure that everybody knows that there will be two shows to make sure that we can accommodate uh, all of our student body. Uh, why do you, what do you want students to get from these performances? I really want people to see the evolution of the, the black community as a whole. I wanted to see the, them to see the progress of how far we have come and how far, how further we can go. Mm -hmm. Uh, what about you, Ms. Foster? Um, same thing, uh, evolution, uh, where we are as a community. Um, I definitely want to um, think about the youth. 
a lot of times we think about black history as a thing, you know, when Martin Luther King freed the slaves, you know how you all like to think, uh, that he was 74 when he did it. But Martin was young, you know, 16, 17, 18 year old. So change comes from young people in all facets, uh, whether it's literature, history, sports. It is young people who lead the charge. And so I want us to see young people uh, making these strides in these areas and taking control of the evolution that we have um, as a people um, and our history. Well, babe, thank you both so much for talking with me today. Absolutely. And I really hope that the program goes well. All right, thank you. We look forward to it. Once again, the Black History Month program will take place on Friday, February 24th in VGM. It's been a fiery season for our boys basketball team. After leading us to victory in Memphis' Tournament of Champions, MVP Anthony Medlock, along with point guard Hugh McFarlane, were selected to the all-tournament team. Let's see if they can survive the hot seat. Hugh and Anthony, you're in the hot seat. Are you ready? Your time begins in three, Two, one. Anthony, favorite team? Or Hugh, favorite basketball player? Devin Curry. Anthony, favorite color? Blue. Hugh, favorite song? Raw Wave, Pieces. Anthony, favorite music artist? Young Boy. Hugh, favorite clothing brand? Pass. Anthony, dream college? Auburn. Hugh, favorite skill? Drawing. Anthony, what position do you play? Shoe guard. Hugh, biggest pet peeve? People who talk too much. Anthony, favorite food? Pizza. Q, dream destination spot? Pasadena. Anthony, something on your bucket list? Go skydiving. Q, staple clothing item? Pass. Anthony, favorite TV series? Pass. Q, favorite music genre? R&B. Anthony, least favorite food? Greens. Q, favorite artist? Broadway. Anthony, favorite basketball player? Kevin Durant. Q, top movie? Paid in full. Anthony, something you want people to know about you? I'm double drawing it. Q, biggest fear? Dying. Anthony, what do you like to do on the weekends? Work out. Q, any pets? No. Anthony, what is a weird fact about you? Pass. Anthony, what's your sign? Scorpio. Congratulations, you survived the hot seat. Good job, guys. Hey, get this. A bill that would eliminate state maximum class sizes has been introduced by a Tennessee lawmaker. The current state law caps class sizes at 25 to 35 students, depending on the grade level. This bill would delete the maximum and give control of class sizes to school districts. A Vanderbilt University professor says that class size cap is already high for most teachers and would mean less individualized instruction. If the bill were to become law, it would go into effect next school year. Time now for a little segment we call Who's Who? We hear her voice, but we rarely see her face. Can you guess who it is? GHS Insider Reporter Morgan McLean introduces us to this GHS faculty member. Hello, teachers and students. Just a quick reminder for you to tune in to Wake Up Germantown daily at 7.20 a.m. Thank you. You may have wondered whose voice you hear over the intercoms. Well, her name is Miss Essence Williams, and she's with me right now. Hi, Miss Williams. Hey! <laughs> so, where are you from? I'm originally from Meridian, Mississippi, and I've been in Memphis since I was four years old. What are some of your favorite hobbies? Um, I love to sing, um, I like to read a good book, and I love, love, love a good nap. Me too. <laughs> What school did you come from and why did you transfer to Germantown? I came from Ridgeway High School, home of the Roadrunners, and then I came over to Germantown, home of the Red Devils with Dr. Stencil, to help hold down the fort. Mm hmm What does your everyday work routine consist of? I usually come in, um, I'll set the bells, make sure the coffee's hot and fresh because we need it, uh, to deal with those phone calls from y'all lovely parents. What are some fun facts about you? Fun facts? Um, mm, I, I could be a bit of a comedian. My people like for me to um, MC our events and things like that. Um, and I have an 18 year old son. A lot of people are surprised to learn that about me. Mm -hmm. What is your greatest strength? My greatest strength? Um, well, you know what? My mom says that I'm, I'm a strong minded person and I have great leadership qualities and I'm great at communicating with people. What advice would you give to your younger self? 
I would tell my younger self to have a little bit more patience and a little bit more self-discipline. Mm-hmm. And for our final question, <laughs> it's a little fun would you rather question. So would you rather forget your favorite books and again so you can read them again for the first time or would you rather forget your favorite movie so you can rewatch it again for the first time? Well, girl, I love books and movies, and I have a tendency to reread and rewatch them quite regularly. So we're going to say both. Is that an option? We'll make it an option. You're right. You're right. You're right. Well, Miss Williams, <laughs> it was great getting to know you. Okay. Thank you so much for coming. Reporting for GHS Insider, I'm Morgan McLean. Is social media taking a toll on our mental health? A U.S. school system thinks so, and it's taking legal action. Seattle Public School is suing Instagram, TikTok, and other social media platforms. The lawsuit says the platforms have contributed to the sharp rise in youth anxiety and depression through the design of their products. Some legal experts believe the district has a strong case, which could inspire other schools to do the same. Other experts are skeptical and says it's a stretch to blame social media companies when there are many other factors. There's a lot going on in the world of GHS sports. Here's Kaden Bolton with the latest. Hey Tia, tonight the Red Devils boys varsity basketball team has the South win to take on the Jaguars. They are hoping to shake off last Friday's loss to Houston during our Winterfest celebration. Houston posted its biggest victory of the season when we fell 62 to 46. It was another story earlier in the season when the Devils beat the Mustangs 56 to 40. Despite the loss, the Devils are 16 and 6 in the season and 4 and 3 in district play. Coach Spears says better focus is needed to finish the season strong. No excuses. Uh, I don't think we took the game as serious. I don't think we were just, the energy level wasn't there. And they, we beat them pretty well over there the first time. So I knew they were gonna come back with vengeance and they did and they handed us a tough defeat. Okay, so the Devils have some tough district games coming up. They play Southwind tonight followed by Collierville on Tuesday. Make sure to come out and show your support. Moving on to our Red Devil wrestling team, the Red Devils have been leaving it all on the mats as they prepare for the upcoming Regional Individual Championship in February. The team is shaking off their loss to Collierville by working harder and training their minds for the regionals. Wrestlers are watching tapes of their opponents to see how they can counteract their moves. Coach Wykowski says despite the loss to Collierville, he's satisfied with how the team has progressed this season. We're now putting them more advanced moves, more advanced techniques. Um, I am really happy with the way our team is responding to them and executing them on the mat. The Red Devils wrestling team has two weeks until the Regional A Individual Championship. It's all day Saturday, February 11th at Carrieville. That's your look at Red Devil Sports. Tia, back to you. That's it for us here at GHS Insider. Remember, you can follow us on Instagram. Our handle is GHS TV. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on GHS Insider.